Greetings from St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, here in the very heart of the City of London. We're delighted that you're joining us for this podcast. Our overarching theme at this time of year is Kingdom, the Kingship of Christ, and also Remembrance, hence the red altar frontal behind me. Do please leave a comment or a like and tell us where you're listening from. It's always good to hear from you. And if you would like to donate to help support these online services, you'll find details of how to do so in the accompanying text. But now, may the light and peace of Christ be with you all as our worship begins. In the days to come, they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, says the Lord. very warm welcome to St Bride's to our choral Eucharist on this Remembrance Sunday. When we remember the horror and the pity of war, we honour the memories of those who gave their lives in the service of their country, and we pray for the peace of our world and pledge ourselves to do all that we can to bring that about. Wherever you are in the world, and however you're listening to us, we hope that you will feel that you are very much part of the St. Bride's family.
we now remain standing as we prepare for our act of remembrance. Let us pray. We remember before you with gratitude, O Lord our God, those who gave their lives for the cause of freedom. We pray that their devotion may bear fruit in us for whom they died, in more abundant concern for others, and in our commitment to peace and justice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
out of the darkness of our divided world, we cry to you, O Lord. Let not the hope of men perish, nor their sacrifice be in vain. Turn to yourself the hearts of rulers and peoples, that a new world may arise where all may live as your children in the bond of peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of our world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to see and establish the peace that God wills for his children. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in thy beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised from the dead, who at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many of you will, I'm sure, be familiar with the BBC TV series, Who Do You Think You Are?, in which, with the help of a team of professional researchers and genealogists, individual celebrities are given the opportunity to explore their own family history. I absolutely love that programme, even on those occasions when I haven't actually heard of the person whose ancestry is being traced, which I have to admit is increasingly the case, doubtless due to my advancing years, and certainly not helped by the fact that I have yet to see a single episode of Strictly Come Dancing. I still find it absorbing, even if I've never heard of the person whose history is being uh, explored. And one of the reasons why I enjoy that programme so much is because I love history. And it's often the case that one of the celebrity's distant ancestors has been involved in some way in a significant historical event. It might be the Easter Rising in Dublin, or the Indian Mutiny, or the Great Fire of London. And there's something about encountering such incidents through the eyes and through the life stories of a real human being, someone who was in the thick of it, that for me really does bring history to life. And that's certainly true in relation to war. So often, in other contexts, war is evaluated in terms of statistics, the big picture, how many on each side were killed in a particular battle. And sometimes the figures involved are so vast that they are almost incomprehensible. For example, is it really possible to get a true sense of the fact that around 20 million people, combatants and civilians, lost their lives in the First World War? But once you personalise it in some way, it begins to have some meaning. And of course, the true impact of war is always felt at the level of the individual human being and their loved ones. And at that level, no one individual is any more valuable than any other, regardless of which side they were on. No one human story is more important than any other. The horror and the waste of war is still exactly the same, regardless. And in the story of an individual life, we can glimpse something of the appalling truth and the reality of that. One of the programmes in the most recent series of Who Do You Think You Are? traced the family history of a young comedian from Sh South Shields named Chris Ramsey. And there was one section of that particular episode that made me sit up and pay attention for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. The programme was tracing the wartime experiences of Ramsay's maternal grandfather, who had served in the Royal Navy in World War II, during which he was on a ship called the Ulster Queen, which was part of the Arctic convoy. In 1941, when Russia entered the war on the side of the Allies, Britain provided the Russians with merchant supplies and ammunition, which were shipped to them via the Arctic route. 
And because it was a very dangerous voyage and particularly vulnerable to attack, warships escorted and protected the shipping. The route taken by those Arctic convoys was so perilous and conditions were so horrific that it was described by Winston Churchill as the worst journey in the world. The single biggest enemy was in fact ice. Every night the vessels would become caked in massive amounts of it, which not only impeded their function, but could destabilize them completely, rendering them liable to capsize. So crew members would spend hours each day hacking away at the ice. They were never warm and they were never dry. And of course, it goes without saying that in those kinds of temperatures, if any one of them went into the water, they were dead. Add to that the constant threat of Arctic storms and attack by hostile planes and submarines, which for obvious reasons were targeting those convoys. And you can see why Churchill described those missions as he did. Anyway, the programme described how in September 1942, Ramsey's grandfather aboard the Ulster Queen was involved in what is apparently widely regarded as the most dangerous and certainly one of the most eventful convoys of the war, codenamed PQ-18, during which the convoy was attacked from the air by 40 hostile planes and from beneath by submarines. 13 vessels within that particular convoy were lost. Now, having seen this, I started to feel rather peculiar because I suddenly made a connection. And I checked and I discovered that it was absolutely true because one of the other young seafarers involved in that same convoy, PQ-18, but he was on a different ship, HMS Faulkner, a ship that was itself repeatedly targeted on that convoy, was my dad. In September 1942, he was 19 years old. And remarkably, I never once remember him talking about it. I do recall him making a passing reference to having once been in Vladivostok, which at the time I found a bit strange, but otherwise nothing. He never spoke about it. The only reason why I was able to make the connection myself, having seen that programme, was because of some reading I happened to have done on my own bat a couple of years ago. Now, there's absolutely nothing special about my dad, of course. He just happened to be one more young naval officer who got caught up in a major conflict. But there is a particular reason why I feel moved to share his story about the Arctic convoy with you this morning. During that attack, PQ-18, the Faulkner detected what appeared to be an approaching submarine, and so five depth charges were set off. Fifteen seconds later, the sound of an underground explosion was picked up, and the captain of the Faulkner, whose name was Scott Moncrief, noted a very large patch of oil starting to appear on the surface of the sea. That patch of oil was the grave marker for around 40 young German sailors, each one of whom was also a precious human life, leaving behind a distraught and grieving family. There is an inescapable sense in which, in war, we are all losers. Shortly after making that particular personal connection, I did a tour of HMS Belfast, as some of you may have done, which was another vessel that participated in the Arctic convoys. And I saw at first hand the extraordinarily grim and basic conditions on board. That was in itself an education. And when I think of what my dad lived through at the age of 19, and by the way, that was not the end of his experience of that war, far from it, 
I started to feel that I understood him a bit better than I had done when he was alive. And I feel quite ashamed of having never known about any of that. This medal is the Arctic Star, which we obtained on my dad's behalf earlier this year. So he never got to see it himself. For me, it evokes some quite complex emotions. There is a very important and real recognition of the horrors that he and so many other young men like him experienced at such a very young age. I find that remarkable and I find the fact that he just lived with that memory and never spoke about it really quite astonishing. Also, the consequences of that war and those experiences undoubtedly left their mark on him. I now realise that he was quite damaged by the Second World War. I understand him a bit better in that respect too. But this medal also inevitably reminds me of those 40 U-boat sailors who lost their lives in such unimaginably awful circumstances in whose death my dad was directly implicated. War must never, ever be glamorised because there is absolutely nothing glamorous about war. But it is so very important that we remember at services such as this one. Because if we do not remember, we can never, ever learn. Human beings are profoundly fallen creatures, so often driven by forces of destruction, the need for power and wealth and possessions. We're driven by fear of the other, by anger, resentment, by a selfish desire to exercise control or to retaliate. And in the process, we so easily get caught up in patterns of behavior that destroy our, that destroy our planet and spirals of violence in which we destroy one another. But there also has to come a point where someone says, enough, enough of this. Just as 2,000 years ago, a carpenter's son from an obscure backwater in the Roman Empire surrendered himself willingly, willingly to the rage and hatred and hostility of the mob and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he held out to all of us the hope that just possibly we might strive for something better when he did that. Today we honour the dead of two world wars and also of countless conflicts across the centuries up to and including the present. We honour the sacrifice of those who died and we mourn their loss. But above all, on this day, we must never ever forget the horror and the tragedy and the sheer appalling waste that is war. Amen.
Let us pray. The response to the bidding, Lord of the years, is we give you thanks. We gather together on this Remembrance Sunday morning and ask you to hear the prayers we offer. We pray for your church throughout the world and for our own church of St. Bride, for King Charles and Queen Camilla, for Alison, our rector, and Jeff and Steve, our associate priests, and for our family and friends. Watch over them and keep them safe. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. God of the nations, help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world. Give those in power wisdom to understand the needs of our time and to learn from mistakes of the past. We pay tribute to those fallen in battle, those whose memory we cherish, and those whose names we will never know. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the bereaved and homeless, who may never know closure, that in all their trials they may know you are with them. We pay tribute to the men and women, past and present, serving in our armed services to protect our freedom, and for those working in the local and international media, in faraway lands who risk their lives to keep us informed. Bless us with the assurance that you are in all things, the tragic and the beautiful, the nightmare and the dream, the darkness and the light. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. Father of love and hope, we bring to your care all who are unhappy, all who live alone, feeling unloved and isolated, and generally finding life difficult to cope with them. Give them comfort in their misery when each day seems long and arduous. We give thanks for the volunteers and care workers who provide shelter, food and comfort to all in need. Healing God, we ask that you touch those who are unwell and make them better. Give peace to the anxious, courage to the fearful, and rest to the weary. God of the spirits, we remember those we have loved who have reached the end of their earthly life and are now at rest in your eternal kingdom, where the clouds of earth's sorrow are lifted. Their memory shines brightly as the stars that light up the darkest night. In the moment of quietness, we bring before you all who are in need of our prayers and those who have no one to pray for them. Lord, for the years, we give you thanks. In Flanders fields. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, flies scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, sunset glow. We loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand? <coughs> To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 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 